This is my car. It's a 2020 Toyota Corolla. And this is my car being driven by OpenPilot running on a Comma 3. OpenPilot is an open source driving agent developed by Comma AI. It's a plug and play replacement for your car's driver assistance system, and it gives your car advanced lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control. The Comma 3 is the latest in a line of devices designed and built by Comma for the specific purpose of running OpenPilot. While its older siblings were basically just cell phones on steroids, the Comma 3 was designed from the ground up with OpenPilot in mind. With three cameras, two front facing and one driver facing, it offers stereo vision and full 360 degrees field of view. The inward facing camera monitors the driver at all times and makes sure that they're paying attention, since this is technically still a level two system and not a self-driving car. When I first heard about the Comma 3, I had to have it, so when I finally received mine in the mail, I went and installed it immediately. The installation was pretty straightforward. Just remove the Lane Keep Assist camera cover, unplug the camera cable and plug in the Comma car harness, plug the RJ45 cable and the OBDC cable into the car harness, plug the other end of the RJ45 cable into the Comma power and route that cable through the weather trim of the car down to the OBD2 port for power. Reattach the camera cover, attach the mount to the windshield, and plug the other end of the OBDC cable into the Comma 3. Now just mount your Comma 3 and you're done. Simple. Now, I've only been driving with my Comma 3 for about a week, but I can already tell you that it's unlike any experience I've ever had. The ability to just sit back, chill, and let OpenPilot do the majority of my driving on highways is really something incredible. But some of you might be wondering, what's the difference between OpenPilot and stock driver assistance systems like Toyota Safety Sense? So let's take OpenPilot for a bit of a test drive and really see what it can do. So, we're gonna do a bit of a test drive today with OpenPilot. Um, currently running version 0.8.10 on Shane's fork, uh, running Stock Edition's master branch. So we're just gonna take it for a drive. I'm currently running the laneless model. And we'll just drive around and see how it behaves, do some back roads and maybe some highway. And we'll just talk about interesting things that OpenPilot can do. Um, and just go from there, so, yep. So, set it to 45 miles an hour. It's the speed limit right now. And we'll just see how, how it does. So, one thing that I really like about the laneless model, and you'll definitely see it while we're driving along this road, um, we just noticed it there, uh, is that it tends to cut corners a lot like a human would, um, and that's definitely because it was trained in an end-to-end -end fashion and it is an end-to-end -end model. Um, so unlike the stock uh, path prediction model that uses the lane lines to help determine path, this is completely end-to-end -end and just drives from watching, watching the road. So because of that, it learns more complex behaviors that, uh, you know, you wouldn't necessarily get from just uh, using lane lines to help determine where to drive. Um, it has a tendency to cut corners and then um, just make smoother turns in general, honestly. Like, it cuts cut that corner a little bit and then it went a little bit farther to the right side. Um, instead of just trying to stay constantly in the center. And it just makes for a smoother experience, especially on these back roads, as opposed to the, uh, the laned model. Um, and that's something I definitely really like about laneless. Hmm. A little too hard on the accelerator, something sometimes like that you know it's very strange I mean like if op you know when open pilot doesn't have uh, any cars in front of it or at least that it's aware of uh, it's it can be very hard on the accelerator um, and then you know it'll come up behind a car and it'll be too going too fast and it'll have to slow down that's another thing I've noticed when it can't see the lead car ahead of it, but you know, it, it's coming up pretty fast, but it can't quite see it and it's accelerating 
to get up to speed in that stretch and then it detects the car ahead of it and then it has to brake really really hard um that's just really uncomfortable and i've had to disengage plenty of times on that you know that's what just happened there we were going around that turn it didn't quite pick up this car in front of me as the lead car yet and it was accelerating through the turn but here's an example of a very strange intersection and we're going to see if open pilot can navigate this we've got the green now um and so we're going to accelerate through. I'm not touching anything. And we'll see where it goes. Uh, wow, that was really, really good. <laughs> I mean, it could have gone either way there. I was actually expecting it to, to take the right and continue down that way because that would have been the easier way for it to go, honestly. But it actually continued and through the left part of the intersection. That was really, really good. No lane lines there. It, it just figured that out on its own. So here's an example of another weird intersection. We got two sets of lights in an intersection. Let's see what happens here. Really good. That was really, really good. I uh, got a little too close to that edge there, but overall uh, that was very good. be really nice if Laneless learned how to navigate potholes someday. <laughs> save my save the front end. So here we're going up to an intersection that has some road work. So this will be interesting. Um, definitely going to be very ready to take over on this one. Bring our speed down to I'm guessing that it's going to take us straight, um, but I'd be interested to see if it could take us up that way. The turn's probably too sharp for it to take, but, you know. Honestly, from where we are, it's a toss-up where it's going to take me. I think it, I just think it's going to take us straight just because that seems like the simpler path, but that other complex intersection we went through, it took the, uh, the more complex path than I thought it was going to take, so... I guess we'll see. Whoa, okay. Not quite what I wanted to do. It was taking a turn there, but it was accelerating too hard. Um, I think, I, I'm actually confident it would have taken it if I had my speed set lower. Um, or if I was falling behind another car, I'd I believe it would have taken that. Speaking of taking turns through intersections, let's see if it can follow these cars through the intersection. Again, I'm going to be ready to take over here. Yeah. It started to do it. It, it actually did start to do it, but it, uh, it got a little too confused. So we're coming back up to that weird intersection. Um, and I'm actually going to put us in the right lane here and see if we can take a right. I'll probably have to gas it a bit to keep it going because um, I actually want it to follow a little bit closer to the lead cars on this turn. But we're trying to go that way. There is a straight route, but it's for that lane only. This lane is right only. So let's see if it actually makes the right Passing it a bit to keep up. Up here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Very good. That was really good. <laughs> very impressive. This is a very tight road. Um, a lot of tight turns, and I'm not expecting anything from it, especially here. I'm just interested. I'm actually going to step my speed way down to 20. I just want to see what Laneless can do. He can't do that. Didn't, didn't do very well there. This little blind hill. Okay, not bad. I can 
see where it thinks it wants to go and it looks pretty good. Again, we're crawling at 20, but you know, it's for science. Um, it's over the double yellow. Thankfully, there's nobody here. Um, it's not gonna do that. I can tell right now it won't do that. Some of these blind turns, you, like, I'm kind of hesitant. Uh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Let's see what we do here. Pretty tight, pretty tight, but did that pretty well. Wasn't that bad. Let's see what we do here. Got the mail truck. actually did much better there than I was expecting. It did some of those turns that I really would have bet against it. So just to give some context on these next two tests, I decided later in the day to take open pilot with laneless through some rotaries. So that's it for this test drive. We really got to put Open Pilot through its paces, and I'm definitely way more impressed with its capabilities. The level of advancement at this stage gets me very, very excited, and I'm even more stoked to see what's gonna happen in the future. 
That's really the whole reason I bought my Comma 3 and the reason that I became interested in OpenPilot in the first place. I've had people ask me, well, you have to pay attention anyway, so what's the point? And for me, it's really about that investment in the future. And I'm very excited to see how it's going to improve and how far it'll go. I'm obsessed with self-driving cars to begin with. I think that self-driving cars are one of the coolest applied AI problems out there. And so as far as a piece of technology, this just checks all the boxes for me and is really the most exciting piece of tech that I think I've ever owned. And what's even more exciting for me is that OpenPilot is only going to get better. Com has already talked about how with the hardware on the Comma 3, it really can handle every aspect of driving for the most part. At that point, the only limiting factor is software, and thankfully software can be improved over time. Luckily, Kama has got an incredibly talented team, which makes them perfect for the job. Myself personally, I would really like to get into this technology someday. I've been trying to work on personal projects that help build my skills in this kind of technology. I initially had a very simple self-driving car project that I used to play a video game, but I'm expanding my scope of the project to really incorporate the full stack of self-driving car development. I built my own Android app for driving data collection. I'm working on building a localizer using mapping algorithms and some of Kama's tools to ground truth that data. And then at some point, I'm going to train a machine learning model on that data to actually predict driving behavior. I really am just trying to scrape the surface of what Kama does so that I can start to build my own skills. And I wanna do that even more by starting to contribute to OpenPilot now that I can actually do some of my own testing. So that's got me very excited and hopefully I'll be able to make some content on that. It'll be really nice to get back to making content. It's just been kind of tough since I've been taking on longer form projects that are kind of hard to make videos about. But hopefully if enough people are interested in OpenPilot, I'll be doing a lot more content on that. So that should be something to look forward to. So that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all later.